pass the first month, but I want to have one more part of this assessment to make sure we understand how to make our 2015 um, better than 2014. Can you see the screen, John? Yes, we can. OK, all right. All right, the purpose of not only these webinars, but the success assessment is, number one, improve your sales effectiveness. That means to equip you to get in front of the right people, your top sources. We learned about sources and methods. And use the right methods that work for you. So if you're getting in front of the wrong people and using the wrong methods, in other words, some people that um, come out of the gate, they, think, they hear that people are successful in, in calling on companies. So they go right to the company world. They don't even, they've never sold to a company. They've never presented to a company. They don't know how to talk to a company. So they're talking to the wrong people with the wrong methods. And they wonder why their business isn't growing. So the purpose of the success assessment is to find your sweet spot, the, part, the place where you, where you are maximizing your success, which leads into number two, which is increase your sales efficiency, help you get more of the right things done in less time. So if I'm going to the right people with the right methods, then it's not so hard. It's not so grueling. I'm, not, um, I'm having uh, better productivity and better results. All right, which brings us to the third one, get better results from your sales efforts. We want to focus on our area of strength, our sweet spot, the, the niche market that works for us, and maximize. Here's another, this is what we're talking about today, this part, and maximize every opportunity so you can strategically and exponentially grow your business. So let's say I'm focused, I find the right people that work for me, I find the right methods that work for me, I'm getting more things done in less time, but when I go to that area of strength, I'm not understanding how to exponentially think. I'm not maximizing every opportunity. Um, so I'm having good results, but not great. So we're going to go from good to, to great today. And which means the fourth bullet, which will help you increase your profitability. Find the sales opportunities that fit you best, where your skill sets are fully, fully utilized <clears throat> to serve the right customer, make the big, dif biggest difference, and earn the highest income. So let's get started. And the right strategy, as we've been talking about, what is the right strategy? Well, we looked at the success assessment, and we learned that we need to use the product, share the product, coach, and duplicate. So under sharing, we, we learned in the last couple of weeks that the source, who we share to, doesn't really matter as long as we're sharing to a source that works for us. Some people are great in cold market. I'm terrible, zero, zero, zero cold market. But um, uh, other people, like Scott Brooks is a perfect example. He went to cold market, made those phone calls, was very disciplined, and he made 100000 his first year, 250 his second year. So cold market was Scott Brooks. I've had other people hear what Scott Brooks has done, go and try to duplicate Scott Brooks, and it has been a major fail because they're not a cold market person. They don't have that kind of skill set that works on a telephone and can get that appointment and is willing to do that. So that would be a bad source for you to, to follow what Scott Brooks does. Other people like Brian Carter, he likes QBRs. That works for Brian, I don't know what, um, that's a method he uses. All right, that's never been a method the Hoffman could use but it works for Brian Crother. So it's good for Brian, but it may, may, may not be good for the Hoffmans. John met somebody um, the other day that was somewhere, and he found out you don't have to do a PBR if you like to do business executive luncheons, if that's your style, or one-on-ones, um, -on or, or bringing them to an event. Those are the three areas of your sweet spot that you excel in. And he was like, oh, I can't believe it. I don't have to do a PBR. No, you don't. <clears throat> but if you're good at it and it produces money and it's a good method for you and it helps people see the presentation and people are coming and your your skill don't not do it definitely do it I know Teresa Ray Johnson I think you are a master in PBR so that is a, an a, um, event but you're moving kind of towards executive luncheons a little bit so it's source and method it doesn't matter really it, except it does matter for you what is your number one source and what is your number one method and then when you're building a team, don't coach people on who you are. Coach people on who they are. So coach them to their method and their source for steps for them. 
All right, so that's what we talked about the last couple of weeks. Let's go to the next slide. All right, we, what we did in order to determine the source and the method was we took this assessment on the three areas of success that you can have. Are you either sell a member, you recruit as an associate, or you open a company account? End of story. Those are the three real deals. The purpose of everything, every activity we do is to um, protect the member, open up a new uh, division in our company through a new associate, a new niche market, or the third thing is open up a new company account. Now, how we do that is it because I went called on my warm market and then I did a presentation and I got a sale, or is it because my warm market gave me a referral? All of these are the, the different sources where my success is coming from. And then what method I use. Um, the last couple of weeks, I've been working with people on our team, and the purpose of this webinar is to tell you something I learned from that. And um, I'm going to pick on probably Marv possibly out there, Marv. But I, I had Marv put together his top source, and his top source was warm market and networking groups. So for him, he is getting all of his success. So if he has a sale or a new associate or a company account, it's because it's somebody he knows, warm market, or it's because he's going to a networking group. So those are his two sources that are producing. And his number one method was a one-on-one. -on -one. I can't remember your other method. Um, but he's going to and meeting with them one-on-one, -on -one and that's working for him. Well, uh, so what do I know from warm market? Or let's say a person has warm market and three-foot rule, or they have warm market, usually warm markets in there, and uh, website leads or something. What do I know if that's their top two sources? What I know is that they don't understand the most powerful area of our business that should be everyone's number one source, and that is referrals. So this is everyone's strategies. When I looked at, um, for instance, Brielle, she did 160 counters last month, and um, that was a good month. For her, she well, that was actually December. I don't know what January is because I'm up here. But in in December, she did 160 counters. She did. She had. Um, she went silver, and I looked at her. So we did her success assessment. Her number one place of a source of all of her success came from referrals, and that is where I want everyone on this phone to be. I want eventually for you to understand the the true mirror to your success is when you're referable. To so write that word down, referable. If I'm making presentations and I'm doing things and nobody's referring me, there's a reason. If companies aren't referring you to other companies, if uh, associations and brokers aren't opening up accounts to you, if, if um, associates aren't opening up their lists to you, uh, there's a reason. So we're going to kind of get into this. And I'm going to help you uh, with a very, very simple strategy for referrals. Yes, we have referrals on the online training. So you want to go to that because there are some really great things. I'm going to teach you a really super four-word concept. The consumer folder has four questions, four answers. This today on the referral strategy has four words and four statements. So you're going to learn that today, how to do the referrals. Because why? That's where the money's at. This column right here, referrals, should be your number one source for everybody. It doesn't matter whether you start with one market or whether you're cold. Um, cold calling, for instance, let's use Scott Brooks, for example. He did cold calling. If, he might be doing that in the beginning, but those, if he serves those accounts well, then it's going to move into referrals. And he will never have to do another cold call again. So what you, if you understand what I'm saying, you start with what you know, whether it be networking groups, cold calling. But once you take care of that person, take care of that company, take care of that associate, they're going to you're going to be working in their um, sphere of influence versus your own. All right, so that's our ultimate goal is to be referable. Why customer consumers trust friends more than brands? Look at the documentation from the Nielsen Global um, Advertising Survey. Survey Recommend, Recommendations from people I know, 92% of the people are going to trust you if you've been recommended. So if I've been recommended by somebody I made a consumer presentation to, <clears throat> and they recommend me to a friend, they don't become an associate, so I get my referrals, and I go off to the referrals, and I say, yeah, Sally told me to call you. She said, you have teenage um, kids, and you drive, and you, know, you, own, you own your own home, and she is, is static about our service. So I, I call up her friend, um, Joan, and so I'm talking to Joan about Sally, and oh, yeah, I know Sally, and she's great, da, da, da. And so now... Joan is more apt to talk to me, listen to me, because she trusts Joan. 
yeah, Joan said this, this, and this about you, and really felt that this would be a really good thing for you to know about. You know, I'd like to you know show it to you about 15 minutes. You know, it might be for you, might not be that whole thing. But now I have a name. I have um, Sally's um, referring me to Joan. All right, consumer opinions posted online. Even that, which in uh, March in Dallas, we're going to meet with the executive directors in Shield Nation and go over a very, very powerful concept about how to do the second one. The most, um, I've seen it work. I've seen people, I, I, I'm going to un unveil it kind of in um, March. We haven't done it yet, and it is something that's been bothering me to do, but this is the second one. And it'll be another tool for you that's simple, and all the executive directors will talk to their teams about it. But um, going on to the third one, branded website. 58%, and of course, the worst one is online ads because they don't know you and they don't have that person um, uh, actually presenting and trusting across the table from them. All right, so here's the goal. Stop struggling, start growing. 91% of customers say they would give referrals. 11% of salespeople actually ask for them. Out. So let's change that. This is what it should look like. Month one of a new person's business, 80% of their business should come from warm market, their sphere of influence, maybe networking. 20% should be referrals from that. One first month, we're talking launch month. From the second month on, if you do your business right, 80% will come from referrals and 20% warm market. If you understand how to, what you are, per, what your purpose of your first month is, and then from that point on, um, referrals or expansion of the people that your your first month people knew, you're going to them, and then they know people, and they know people, and they know people, and they know people, and that's how you ex exponentially grow. All right, how to increase referrals? Here's the simple model. The biggest piece of the pie, the biggest part of increasing referrals is you must be a deserving, you must be deserving of a referral. And we're going to go, the next slide's going to talk about what does that mean? What does it mean? How do you know if you are deserving of a referral? The second one is language. Um, the small pie here, <clears throat> part of your success in this area is the what you say and the when you say it. That's also what we're going to talk about. But first we're going to talk about are you deserving? And then we're going to talk about the language. So what makes you deserving? Are you referable? These are four little checks to ask yourself, do you offer a great service? If you do, then you're deserving a referral. Are you confident in your abilities? You're serving the customer in front of you. You're serving the small business owner. You're serving the, the, um, the, the HR director or the vice president of benefits. <clears throat> You're serving the broker, you're serving the, the associate, you're serving the consumer. It doesn't matter who you're in front of. Are you offering a great service to that client? Are you confident in your abilities to serve them? And if you're not, maybe you're in the wrong niche. Maybe you shouldn't be in group. Maybe you shouldn't be talking to small business. Maybe you should be focusing on consumers. So find out what, where are you confident in your abilities. And then the third one, are you willing to go the extra mile when you make a presentation to a, a family? Do you follow up a week later? Did you get your will? I'm so excited. Do you follow up a month later? Tell them the testimonials. Do you put them on the marketing retention so that they're getting a ton of testimonials and reasons to use their product? Are you using the follow-up system so that they are validating constantly their purchase? That is going the extra mile. When you go to a, um, we have, if you are in the group uh, arena, or you're going out to companies, and that's your niche market, and that's your, your sweet spot. Are you visiting them at Christmas? Walking in for no reason. This isn't an enrollment. You're not getting an app. You're actually just saying, hey, I appreciate you. That's going the extra mile. I, I sent, we put pictures on Facebook where Varel went to all her account, accounts, and we told you what to make and how to go in there, and then, then they see you walk in, and guess what's going to happen? They might give you a referral then, all right, just because you're going the extra mile. The fourth one, do you deliver real value to the other party? You have to ask yourself, if I were them, would I want my, me as their rep? If I were them, would I want me making a presentation the way I'm making it? If I were them, would I want to be recruited by me if I were that associate? So are you offering value? Are you helping that? Are you doing um, tell me, show me, let me, grow me with your, new, with, with your new team members so that they're fully equipped and confident to do something like referrals, which can literally 
double your income, just the skill set alone. All right, so those, that tells you whether you are referrable, but let's, let's look at the system of doing referrals. All right, it's called BBRW. Most people are not shown, trained, or encouraged to ask for referrals. So this is like super simple. Benefit, benefit, recommend who? BBRW. So people can remember that, right? Benefit, benefit, recommend who? So this is how it looks. First thing, step one. Have you, now I'm talking to the person, have you found a benefit with what I've shared with you today? So we talked about in the very beginning, our strategy is to use, share, coach, duplicate. We use the service, we share it in our method, in our, to our sources in our method. We share it and then we uh, coach people to do share too and then we duplicate it with a new person. All right, so <clears throat> step one, have you found a benefit with what I've shared? Okay, so there's the sharing part with you today. And so we're asking the person we're, we're talking to, that could be an HR director, that could be a small business owner, that could be a family, individual. Uh, the second one is, that's the B. Do you think others, now I'm asking them, I'm starting to get them to think outside of themselves. So first of all, do I get agreement on step one? Do you think, um, uh, let's go back to step one. Uh, okay. Um, have you found a benefit with what I've shared with you today? Step two, do you think others would find a benefit with what I've shared with you today? Exact same words, only it's others instead of you. Third, step three, would you be prepared to recommend, not refer, the word recommend me to others? Um, by the way, the word recommend is more um, appealing to a person's ear than the word referral. So we never, even though I'm saying we, we're talking about referrals, we don't use the word referral, <laughs> which is odd. Uh, we use the right word recommend, okay? Would you be prepared to recommend me to others? So now I'm getting, first, do you agree that this is recommendable? Basically, the first question, is this a benefit? Second question, would you, is it, would this be a benefit to others? So they're like thinking, yeah, yeah, I guess it would. And then the third one, you're engaging and kind of getting more of a call to action. Would you be prepared to recommend? Okay, so the fact that they think it's a benefit to others doesn't mean that anything to you until they get to step three and they're prepared or willing to recommend you to others. And step four, who, now this is strategic, who would be the first two people you can think of that could also benefit from what I've shared with you today. So it's literally the same words all the way through, what, from what I shared with you today. And it's just benefit, benefit, recommend who. And so those are the step, the four steps. Let's go through those again. All right, benefit, benefit, recommend who. Everybody say it to themselves, read it out loud. and. Um, have you found a benefit with what I've shared with you today? Do you think others would find a benefit with what I've shared with you today? Would you be prepared to recommend me to others? There's the kind of like you're transferring the call to action. Who would be the first two people you can think of that could also benefit from what I've shared with you today? All right, so there's step four, and it's, Benefit, benefit, recommend to. And the, the question is, John, you can go, we can just start talking about this, but I want to start by giving some, some testimonials of how referral marketing works to, to grow your business. That was a simple way that you can do it, because I want you to be quick to go out and actually um, take you know, your feet on the street and make a difference. So let's go to um, Marv. Can you share kind of what we learned, what you learned from your success? Yeah. Yeah, before before we jump out to these guys, let me let me just share something when you finish here in in respect to a little testimonial about what you're talking about. Okay. Are we good? Yeah, um, um, Steve and Marv are gonna. Well, I'm just gonna sh share what Marv learned from the success assessment. Kind of open up his eyes. So I believe he's gonna have. He's so excited about understanding his assessment and realizing. Um, what he needs to do differently in order to have much more business, much more efficiently. And then Steve Hales has a story about referrals as well, but over to you, right. John. All right, and um, hey, listen, while I'm sharing just a quick comment here, if anybody else would like to uh, just have a question or make any type of a comment, feel free to do so, but just click on the dashboard to raise your hand, and uh, we'll come out and call on you. And uh, I'm going to try to, let me try to communicate this 
uh, to everybody. This this just happened yesterday, um, and and it was uh, Riel was doing a group enrollment out in uh, the Colorado Springs area, and I'm not going to use uh, this person's name or the company they're with, uh, but it's a uh, top top 15 broker in the country. And uh, this individual uh, is uh, a power player, uh, not only on the West Coast, mountain states, but just a tremendous individual. So anyhow, Riel's doing this enrollment, and this individual is there, uh, and he actually is the broker for the company, unbeknownst to Brielle. So uh, he and Brielle had a conversation, and, and Brielle asked me to give him a call. And, and in the conversation yesterday, I just called to say hello, introduce myself, uh, our conversation lasted an hour, and it was an amazing, amazing call. And he just said, you should be awfully proud of, of your daughter. Uh, she was sincere. She had tremendous passion. She was professional. She was intentional. And she showed a very sincere interest. I'm sharing that with all of you because, um, you know, uh, from a referral perspective, what Darcy's what Darcy's talking about, if, if people see those things in you and I, if they see that we're sincere, if they see that we have passion, if they see that we're professional, if they see that we're intentional, if they see that we care and show an interest in others, um, especially when we're talking to that individual, that war market person, when those statistics that Darcy shared, since 91% of people say they would give referrals, but only 11% ask, when we ask, we're not going to have a problem with referrals. Now, something else that Darcy spoke of, and, and uh, uh, I think this is absolutely critical. I see this as I travel across North America. Uh, you know, exposure and activity is really all that matters. But in this assessment with the things that Darcy's talking about, we must be intentional to speak to the skill set of the people we are talking to. Again, let me go back to my conversation yesterday. This individual said to me, I'm familiar with your services. I'm like, great. Tell me, how did you get introduced to our services or what do you know? He says, about eight years ago, an individual just popped into my office and, you know, did catch my attention with a few things and then invited me and was, you know, fairly, you know, uh, pushy toward a coming to a Tuesday business meeting. He said, when I went to the meeting, he said, all I could think of was Amway. So here's, here's what happened. This individual probably would have brought our services into his uh, uh, brokerage, you know, employee benefits. He's huge on voluntary benefits. Probably would have brought our product in years ago had the individual spoke to and recognized the skill set of who he was talking to. In other words, a business opportunity meeting on a Tuesday night is not where John Hoffman or Darcy Hoffman would have invited this person. I would never have done or taken this individual, this professional insurance broker, huge in the mountain west coast states, I would have never taken him to a biz op meeting. He said, you know, although I thought the product was good, I saw trouble right out of the gate. I looked at this just like Amway and said no. And so in our conversation yesterday, it didn't take me too long to help him to understand what it was we did, what differentiated our organization in speaking to and complementing the things he wanted to do. He thinks that our benefits are absolutely phenomenal. He is going to add identity theft and legal services to his, benefit, to, to his voluntary benefits. He has been huge. He has 140 employees, and he's now wanting us to come out and train his team. He's, he's basically said, what do I need to do to roll these out, and what do I need to do to work with you guys? And, and it just simply boils down to, you know, Brielle being professional, doing what she does so well, just like all of you, doing what you do so well, but then looking at the people that are across the table from us and speaking to their skill set, you know. How do you increase those referrals like Darcy has on the board? Speaking to the strengths and interests. And I said to him, we are very good at what we do. Our ultimate goal is to complement the strengths and interests of professionals like yourself. Not only can we help you drive a revenue stream, but we can deliver a benefit that your clients are requesting and asking for 
and right now buying from a stranger. And then I used a couple of other stories and testimonials. Um, there's more to this story, and there's, you know, uh, if I had more time, I'd break it down even more. But I hope that gives you a little bit of an idea as to the beauty that we have in a business model that's clearly differentiated. But please understand a size 10 doesn't fit all. Uh, I am not a network marketer. I am not a B2B specialist. I have the good fortune of owning a sales and marketing company that has a portfolio of services that is available to a heck of a lot of niche markets. And whoever I'm prospecting with the company that I have, I then speak to their skill set. If it's the small business plan, if it's the employee benefits, if it's the commercial drivers, if it's you know an exposure or tool that needs to help me uh, bring their awareness to another level, I'll speak to that. Darcy and I are, are not opposed to PBRs. We're not opposed to biz op meetings. We are 100% committed to all those things. But we're only going to use those tools in respect to the skill set of the individuals that we're talking to. So I hope that all makes sense. And um, if we've got time, I'll share a little bit more on this story. But let me go out to, real quick, um, some individuals well, John, who are... Let me, let, me set, let, let me set up Steve, Steve Hales. Okay. Um, because there's something I want him to share that people get a little confused also. On your success assessment, or let, let's look at our strategy. Our, the right, the, the, this screen right here is about a satisfied customer that used the service. Can everybody see the big city? And then yep. in your area, you have 10,000, 50,000, 100,000, a million, 10 million, whatever, in your city. So how does a satisfied customer get to all the people in her area? Um, how do you have influence and a market expansion into your local market first, across the street, across the city, across the country, across that's across the state, and then across the country. So really, people are like all over the place, right, and getting nothing done. That's lack of efficiency. So if I looked up here, increasing your sales efficiency or doing the right things at the right time and, and being more productive, going all over the place. I talked to somebody, oh, yeah, I'm doing these leads. And you know, I'm, I'm like, what? And they're like leads. In, Illinois, and they live in, let's say, Florida, and they're getting leads in Illinois and Texas and this and that. And I go, well, how? They have no face-to-face -face relationships. They have, um, and they don't know the people. So you're doing cold market leads and people with other um, in other states. The chances of them sticking and staying because they have no like in impact is a little bit more difficult than somebody that you're working with personally and building referrals in your local market, and then those referrals then stick and stay because they've been referred and they trust you and you've earned that and then you work from there and then you work from there. You have a solid foundation that way versus all over the place looking for just a, just a new associate that never makes a sale. Yuck. Who wants an associate that never actually goes out there and does anything in the marketplace? You just wasted all that time when you could find the right person in, right, that you can coach and develop locally or um, somebody that you know or somebody you've been referred to. The value and the productivity of that particular person increases. But here's the problem, I think. Uh, when people go out and they use a product and then they're sharing, all right? And I don't know, Steve, your story, who the source was of who you shared to, but you went out and made a consumer presentation and the person did not buy. Now, here's an error in thinking that I want to address today because what I see is I, I see that someone looks at the person that they're presenting to and thinks, recruit, recruit, recruit. So I go to a presentation and I am sitting across from somebody and my number one objective that I've been trained on, let's say, is to recruit that person, talk to them about the business, get them the business. Well, the reality is 20% um, of the people you present to will want to do your business too. So you'll have 100% of all of your customers that get the, benefit, the, the membership, 20% will actually become associates. So that means if all you thought about was the associate, you missed 80% of the people that just want the membership because your mindset and your focus is just the associate. So you go to the presentation, that's your main thing, they're not interested in the business, that, that, um, and, and you, you don't even get a membership, let's say, or let's say they're not interested in the membership and they're not interested in the business. What in the world happens from that? How do you be exponentially growing when they said no to the membership and no to the, to the um, business? So Steve, if you want to share the story of the person that said no, and how you have been trained to get referrals, so you make, you maximize, right here, the thing is maximize 
um, every opportunity. So you're sitting at the table, you're doing a one-on-one, -on -one, or you brought them to a briefing, whatever it is. They came to a PBR. They aren't interested in the product. They aren't interested in the, the um, opportunity. And most people think that that was a failure, that there was no opportunity there, that they didn't get a win. Um, and they're sad about that. But not if you change your mindset. And so, Steve, are you on the line right now? I am. Am I unmuted? Yes. And so why don't you share the person that said no and what happened from there and what you did. Okay. Uh, actually, I have a perfect story for that. I, I met with a, a woman named Susan Stallnecker. She is the event coordinator for a nonprofit organization called Prospectus Burko. And I met with her because I really like what they do and, and what, they, what the, the impact they make on the community. And I, I really wanted to help them uh, spread the word about who they are and what they do. Um, in the process, she asked me what I do. I, I presented the consumer folder to her. Um, she wasn't very interested for herself, but I said, who would I talk to here in your company that could, that could uh, help me make an impact in the employees' lives? And she grabbed the consumer folder from me, ran out, grabbed the HR director, brought her back in. Her name is Kim. Kim and I hit it off right away. And uh, we started rolling there in September. And they have 300 and how, employees. What percent, and been through. what percent of the employees enrolled, did you tell me? 70%. 70 percent. 70% of the employees enrolled from a no. The person he was talking to said no. There was no interest for that person. And he understands the power of harnessing the power of referrals. Went right past that person, exponentially thinking, it wasn't about what they thought, the person in front of me. It's about who they knew and who I could help with a product I know people want. So he moved right past that, that person's lack of understanding about the value of our product and still asked the question. You know, um, And maybe in her case, the BBRW uh, wouldn't work. She didn't think it was a benefit to her. <laughs> okay, The BBRW works really well when you have just signed up a member. And then it goes, it goes on from there, or you've got a new company account. So, um, Steve, any other comments about that? Uh, on that, uh, that woman never even she didn't even sign up when we did the uh, the enrollments. So she came to the meetings and uh, she put put she opted out on on her application. But um, we still have a great relationship, and that didn't I didn't let that affect me in in working with her. You know that that didn't matter. I wasn't really there to get a yes or no from her. I was there to to connect with it, with her sphere of influence. Absolutely. That statement you just made, Steve, could just be the whole statement for the whole webinar. And that short-sightedness, and I want you all to check yourself. What are you thinking when you're meeting with someone? Are you thinking you have to make it right for that person? Are you selling and pushing the person in front of you? Or are you realizing you're not really there? You're there to educate them on the value of what you have and ask them to open you up to the people or develop that relationship, like John's saying with Brielle's story, develop that relationship so that you can get uh, them on your team. Whether they're on your team as a member or an associate, we want them on our team <clears throat> with referrals. So you're going to think differently about there's a member, I should add a new column you know, to here, uh, right here. It should be you sold a member, you uh, got a new associate, you got a new company account, or you got a referral. Because a referral is as powerful as a sale. A referral actually is a sale. So um, great story. And then uh, Marv, if you want to just share the, the, what, what you learned about when you went through your stores and found out the sources you had and how you, your mind shift, has shifted from the understanding of what referrals is and how it can apply to your success. It would be my pleasure. Can you hear me OK, Darcy? Uh-huh. Speak up a little bit, Marv. OK, just a second. Is that better? Yeah, that's yeah. great. Oh, fantastic. Well, uh, first of all, this training has been unbelievable as usual. But yes, I had a, I had a tremendous uh, wake-up call in terms of uh, what, what I was missing in my business. And I called Darcy and I said, you know, I, I believe I'm doing all the things I'm supposed to do. A lot of activity, uh, you know, hitting the list, follow-up, you know, the whole process that we've been taught. And so when I did the assessment, it became very apparent that 50% of my book of business is based on my own effort. That in itself, I realized, is an issue. <laughs> and, so, and so then I wanted to find out why. What's the case? Well, it's referrals. 
and I'm not using the referrals to my benefit. I'm meeting some incredible people, but I wasn't doing referrals to the third power, if you will, and not, not, not using it to my advantage. And so I recognize that if I want to place myself in the position like a Brielle Hoffman, for example, I have to really engage in the referral process consistently. And so I started. Here's what's happened so far. I met with a, uh, a retired president of a bank that was on my, on my chicken list that I never put on my list because I was too chicken to. But anyway, that's another story for another time. I meet with this, 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 ex, this, this former president of a bank. I asked the question, if you were me, and I talked about do you see the benefit absolutely, et cetera, et cetera, who would you speak to? He gives me two names, one of the VP of the bank that he used to work at and another business consultant. I met with those two, and those two gave me referrals. The business, the, the, the uh, VP uh, gave me a referral to the HR person in the bank. The business consultant gave me three referrals to HR directors. When I called the HR directors, one woman says to me, I would have never returned your, I would have never taken your call if you didn't have Steve Codwell's name in your message. I simply said, here's someone else calling about a business. But I heard Steve's name, and I had to call you because of the respect that I have for Steve. I then met with her. She says, I wasn't excited about this meeting. I'm only meeting with you because of Steve. But when I got done, she was like, there's absolutely no reason I wouldn't endorse this product. She then said to me, I, I then asked her, who would you talk to? And she started to tell me a little bit about her circle of friends. I said, well, do you know Samantha over at Bicycle? Yeah, she was a good friend. Do you, do you know Marcy over at Bet? Absolutely. My husband and I have some play golf together. I will call them in advance to let you know you're going to be calling them. I didn't call Samantha. She said, I was expecting your call because Holly called me and told me you would be calling. So my point is that these companies, I've been trying to get in for more than two years. But one, one, one meeting with somebody that was on my chicken list who gave me a referral, that gave me a referral, places me in front of three companies I've been trying to get in on my own for the last two years. So the power of referrals is pretty clear for me. No hesitation anymore. It becomes a part for well, the core of my business moving forward. And that's what I've been doing uh, from January to February, and I'm watching a difference already. Um, so back to you, Darcy. All right, well, that's awesome. That's great. That's, this is, this is going to be your new not number one <laughs> source is referrals. I can't wait to see 2015. At the end of the year, you look back, and you're going to be like, wow, look at how much my business has changed because you realize um, I just I just see so many people going out there thinking that their end game is to get a person into the business or get a person on the membership, and they that means you have a one to one ratio. So if that person says no to the business, no to the thing, and you think that's over, that presentation's over. You went and met them, you you brought them to a briefing, whatever it was for their exposure for them to get that presentation, and you feel like that was an end. That was the end of your objective with that one person. And I want you to totally throw that out. Never think like that again. And always think, if you really care about that person, you're sincere in your heart like Brielle, and you want them. And like Steve said, um, he's sincere about her knowing about it, but it, she never even signed up at the, at the enrollment. Hilarious. But there's 70% of the employees did. Woo so it, it's still he his objective. Very, very um, purposeful and intentful objective to serve the company, serve people, serve family, serve the community. And so that person in front of you is a gateway, a gateway to opportunity, a gateway to maximizing that, that time that you have. So over to you, John. Yeah, fantastic. Good stuff across the board. And uh, I'm, I'm reminded of something our, our late founder, Harlan Stonecipher, said years ago that it, it seems the world is conspiring to do us good. And what I mean by that is these thieves, these experts, these professionals uh, in the area of identity theft and, and even legal services, uh, Anthem, which is a Blue Cross Blue Shield company, just had a data breach, breach by the Chinese. Eighty million customers are affected from Social Security to income statements to driver's license, and they're not quite sure if medical has been affected yet, um, let alone Home Depot, let alone Target, let alone everything else. So. 
Um, you know, the opportunity for referrals uh, certainly stronger than it's ever been. Let's go, uh, Calvin Stewart. You've got your hand up, sir. You've been patient. Uh, do you have a question or comment? Calvin Stewart. All right. We're going to skip past Calvin. Um, I saw here uh, Karen Irish Brago. Karen, you've got to dial in to the uh, conference line. We need the access code and PIN code in order to get you in the audio portion. So we'd love to hear from you, but you got to put in your PIN code and access codes. Um, real quick, I saw Frankie. Uh, well, here we go. We'll go to Teresa, and then I'll come back to Frankie. Teresa Wright Johnson, uh, Executive Director up there in the Virginia market. Teresa, go ahead. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Hoffman and Mrs. Hoffman. Great webinar this morning. Um, you know, really had some great aha moments. And one of the things that I truly love was that in step four, you said who would be the first two people you think of that could benefit from, you know, just what you shared with them for that day. And, you know, a lot of times we're saying, you know, asking for referrals, and we're thinking of, you know, maybe they can get give us five, ten names, but it's so easy for a person to just give you two names. Even when you're just sitting down with an individual that you sold the family plan to, I mean, obviously they may give you more than that, but just asking them for two names can be huge. That's something that most people can do right away. The other piece was working in your own, in your own market. I thought I was listening to um, Darcy as she talked about people who start getting, you know, leads in different markets, coal market leads, I should say. But, you know, if you can build in your own backyard, those individuals, like you said, will move you outside of your backyard. And those individuals will stick simply because the person that you're working with in your backyard, they know, like, and trust them. And so they will value whatever it is they're telling them that they should do or look at or what have you, or maybe they're able to get referrals through that person. But it all hinges on how you treat the people in your own market that you're working with. If you're not being a good sponsor, if you're not being passionate, if you're not being intentional with that person, they're not going to refer their friends to you. So it's all relevant when you think about it. And then it's so important that you, lastly, that you know who you're talking to. Just like the case, I've seen this happen in my weekly meeting. People will bring brokers or insurance agents to the weekly business briefing, and that's really not the environment for them. And they're wondering, well, why didn't that person sign up? Or I don't know what happened to them. It's because you tried to fit them into a wrong environment. And so it's really important that we put people in the right environment, put them in the right place where they belong, help them to speak to the right people who can speak their language. Even, that's even better. So this has been a very good uh, webinar this morning. Lots of good nuggets. Um, definitely referrals are, are the way to go. And even when you're recruiting someone, just asking that person, you know, where do they work and, you know, who that person is. Um, that handles benefits, you know, that also can lead to referrals for you. And um, even corporate, just this week, corporate sent me a referral. Um, and as a result, the young lady is coming on board. She's coming out to the Super Saturday event. She came out to the Tuesday meeting. I went to Maryland with her on that. Then she called me yesterday and said, can I come to the Virginia meeting? Absolutely. And so, I'm just really excited for where we are and what we have and moving into 20, as we're in 2015 already, but just where 2015 is going to lead us by just being really intentional and following the instructions that you and Darcy are giving us to help us to really build our business and be strong. Back to you, Mr. Austin. Thanks, Teresa. Appreciate your comments. Uh, have a rocking uh, weekend up there, uh, the Super Saturday. And we're going we're gonna to wrap it up with just one more person. And I think Teresa said something important. You know, just remember this, folks. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And that's going to go a long ways from the referral side of things. And I, I'll never forget, Darcy and I gave 20 referrals when we bought our first set of Cutco knives to a, a college student. And recently our uh, uh, fitness center was purchased by Gold's Gym. 
And on the way walking out, the guy asked for five referrals, and I'm like, no, not really, not right now. And he's like, well, you can get a T-shirt. You know, I'm like, okay, I'll give you five referrals, and you know, just that simple, you know, for a T-shirt. So it's kind of crazy. So one more question. We'll go to uh, Frankie uh, Prima. And uh, Frankie, you've been patient. Go ahead, and we'll wrap up with uh, you. Well, my, I'm sorry. My question is closing statement. The best closing statement to use at the time to write the customer's application. The best closing statement at the time they're uh, filling out at, their membership app. At the time of closing, yes, the application. I think it goes back to those questions Darcy shared. You want to pull that up, Darcy? I don't think he, I think he's asking when you're closing on the membership, not getting referrals. What's the best way to close on a membership? Well, when you are at the point to write the app, you have a commitment, but you don't have the app yet written. Oh, okay. Well, that's pretty simple. Have you seen the consumer folder training that we've taught for the last uh, four or five years on the Shield Nation website? Yes. Okay. Well, all the questions are right there, and the trial close is pretty simple. You know, so after you've asked those four questions, you know, um, uh, would you like the same privilege that the wealthy have? Yes. You know, would you, you know, the, the, have you ever been treated unfairly? You know, do you think it will happen again? So you've got your trial close, and it's, it's you know, that, that's, where, that's where those four questions and four benefits move you right into a trial close which is, you know, about as strong as it gets. That's what I've used. That's what I've used for 17 years. That's what the majority of the organization uses, and it works well. Well, what do you do to actually get the money out? There you go. That's when they do it. That's when I put the application in front of them, and they're filling the application out right there. Okay. There you go. You know? But would a dollar thirty-two a day be too much to spend to put your family under this? Or wouldn't you agree that a dollar thirty-two is beneficial? Let's get you. Let's get you started. Let's get you protected today. Great. I get the membership out. They start running. Okay. There you go. All right. There you go. I, I hey. think a lot of people are missing that one point. <laughs> well, just direct them right back to the uh, to the website. There's a full training there. There's a script there, and uh, certainly the consumer folder <clears throat> gets the job done. Uh, it's, it's worked an amazing way in all aspects of our businesses, from the consumer side into everything we do on the professional side. <coughs> Thanks for your Thank question. Thank you so much. Yep, Great. Absolutely appreciate it. Uh, Darcy, any final comments? We'll wrap it up. No, I just uh, I can't wait to hear a referral testimonial. Remember, stories sell and facts tell, so please, uh, uh, going into the next webinar, we look forward to hearing all of your guys' stories, and if Darcy and I can be of help, please leverage us as we, uh, again, are in New York uh, this Saturday, New Jersey Tuesday night, Wednesday Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, and Thursday uh, out there in the Cincinnati market uh, with Ron and the team and everybody there. Appreciate you guys. Thanks for the comments. Everybody have an amazing weekend, and we'll talk to you all soon. Bye-bye.